I want to give you the heads up. Never question God. When you're about to transition from one career move, one relationship, or one situation to the next, it's because you've gotten every confirmation in the world that it's your season to transition from where you are to where you're looking to be. Don't underestimate yourself. You do what you can do, and God will do what you can't do. Take the initiative, throw your net on the other side. Be ambitious, reach, ask for help, not because you're weak, but because you want to remain strong and expect things to get better for you. It is with the mind that we serve the Lord. The mind is the battleground. It is the place where the greatest conflict is. There are more people in this room having trouble in their mind than there are people having trouble in their finances. Every thought that I have started with a question. What's wrong with me? Let me tell you what happens when you ask that question. That question will attract a million answers. The moment you say, what's wrong with me? The devil has a list, everything. He'll show you everything from your genetics to your jawline to everything. I mean, he just take everything. But your questions direct the integrity of your thoughts. The struggle is in your mind. Slept eight hours and you wake up still tired. Your mind has been in turmoil all night long. You've been wrestling in your sleep. Your body went to sleep, but your mind is still caught up in a warfare. Your mind is the battleground. Just because people let you down, don't give up on God who never will. Just because you lost a job, don't stop trusting that God is my provider. When someone closes a door in your face, God allows them to close the door in your face. All God wants you to do is walk up the hall, because I can promise you he got a better door that he wants you to go through than the one that got shut in your face. That's a fact. The door is closed for a reason. Because God just wants you to walk up the hall because he got another door. And when you open it and get behind it, you ain't going to believe what's back there. But you will never get to it if you stand in front of that door crying. God is the creator of all doors. I'm just going to see what else he got for me. You think things are going to just go your way? Well, they're not going to just go your way. You got to make them go your way. You think things are going to just happen for you? Well, they're not just going to happen for you. You got to make them happen. So I want to challenge you to waste no more effort wrestling with other people. Your destiny, your future is not predicated on the decision of someone else. You've wasted too much of your life trying to change other people's mind about you. It doesn't matter what they think about you. God is not going to bless you by their opinion. God is going to bless you by how you see yourself. Just start acting like you're blessed, talking like you're blessed, thinking like you're blessed, dressing like you're blessed. If you will put actions behind your faith, one day you will see that become a reality. You cannot go around thinking that you've reached your limits. You're going to become what you believe. You are fully equipped. It may not have happened in your past, but it can happen in your future. Now, I'm asking you to go get what belongs to you. You are blessed. You are prosperous. Start acting like it, talking like it, dreaming like it. People who have not accepted greatness for themselves, these people don't study, ladies and gentlemen. They don't have time for personal growth and development. They don't have time to work on their minds. People can affect us. Our peers can affect us. Our environment can affect us. Just working consciously to overcome the poverty consciousness, the feeling constantly of saying you deserve this. There's no need for you to be afraid. It's not too good to be true. It's true because you've earned it. Why do we care so much about people who don't care about us. That won't be there in the hard times, that won't be there when you hit rock bottom, that won't be there in your struggle, that never call you and ask you how you doing, that never calls you and ask you or checks on you to see if you need something. 
Why do we care about what they think? We all go through disappointments and things that are not fair. It's easy to hold on to the hurts, think about what they said. We get up in the morning, it's the first thing that comes to mind. We don't realize how much that's affecting us, draining our energy, limiting our creativity. If you're going to fulfill your destiny, you have to get good at letting things go. See, your unwillingness to forgive another person is like you sipping the poison, waiting on them to die. Forgiveness is for you. You can't drive your car looking in the rearview mirror. You can't. There's a reason why the rearview mirror is this big and the windshield is this big. If you keep looking in the rearview mirror, you're going to keep crashing your car. Have you ever noticed that when your faith is the strongest, you come up under the greatest attack? Because every time the devil senses that you're about to walk into who you be, and he's trying to stop you from doing it, slap somebody and say, just do it. Be great before it's too late. Being in a great house does not make you great. It's one thing to have great parents, but that doesn't make you great. And they said it's possible to be in a great house, but you not be great. So being in a great house does not ensure that you'll become great. How can you keep your mind on what you're trying to do? How can you make the choice of discipline over procrastination? How can you keep an attitude of doing it all and doing it now? How can you stay focused on your ambitions? You can keep your focus on your work or you'll find yourself distracted. Distracted by negative thoughts, distracted by negative people, and pretty soon, depending on the type of people you've associated with, distracted by your doubts within yourself. Even when you face rejection, even when you face failure, you make a decision. I will remain in the grind. I'm not backing down. I'm called to make a difference. Greatness is not immediate. This is so important. In other words, greatness takes time to develop. Greatness is not immediate. You got to stay with it. You got to stay at it. You got to keep working on it. We give up too quickly. You map out, you think, you strategize, you change up your team, ready for the opportunity to present itself. Most of y'all are impatient. If it doesn't happen as fast as you want it to happen, you say maybe it wasn't meant to be. God will never give you something somebody else is supposed to have. I want you to write this down. There are two powers in life that every one of us have to deal with every day that you can never control or stop is time and change. You cannot control time. You cannot control change. What's at the core of achieving the good life? The major key to the good life. It is not in mastering the attributes of leadership. Every day in a thousand different ways, we are trying to improve ourselves by learning how to do things. We spend a lifetime gathering knowledge in classrooms and in experiences. Self-approval, that's a very challenging area. Ladies and gentlemen, that's where most people get stuck. That's a stage that a lot of people get there and they never move out of that area. Why? Many things can contribute to our not approving our dreams, our not feeling good enough. A lot of things can contribute to that. Many of us never live up to our potential or don't approve ourselves because we never had anybody to believe in us. And because your doing doesn't come from the deeper place of being, it hasn't worked for you. If you're trying to find out who you are by doing things, you will never find out who you are by doing. You have to start with being because the difference between the two determines the direction of your destiny. I need to embrace the suffering. 
You know, there's something powerful that once you just sort of embrace the fact that in order to achieve something big, you've got to get rid of these distractions, you're probably going to have to have some suffering to get there or some sacrifice to get there. And so once you've embraced and decided that this suffering, this sacrifice you're making is an indicator of progress, suffering and sacrifice and hard work is an indication of progress towards our dreams. So easy, so easy to put things off, so easy to say you're gonna do it tomorrow. Well, I want you to reprogram your brain and tell yourself that tomorrow is not a viable option. You do it today, you get it done today. That's what you do. The journey is just the pieces that you have to go through and you get to choose to enjoy those pieces, to have fun during those pieces because you know you're gonna come out the other end being the person you wanted to be. And you're gonna see it before everybody else does. That I can guarantee you. When we go around dwelling on these negative, defeated thoughts, we are sending poison down through our system. We are telling our command center, the mind, this incredible tool God's given us to release defeat, failure, mediocrity. I wish for you that you might develop a growing awareness of the world around you and your possibilities in it. Develop a sense of history and destiny and be grateful for the opportunities that you have to participate in that grand endeavor. Start the daily action of first cleaning up all your current situations. Remember, little achievement leads to confidence that conquers guilt. Then buy up every challenge to reach your goal. You can now handle it. The winter, the spring, the harvest, the inspiration from it all, and the immediate and future progress that will someday give you a view from the top of your goals, your adventure, and your achievement. When you get up in the morning, no matter how you feel, you need to say, I am strong, healthy, energetic. I have discipline and self-control. I look good, I feel good, I think good, I smell good. Some of you, if you would do that, your mind would go tilt, tilt, tilt. It would think, what in the world are they saying? It would send an alert all through your system saying, hang on guys, we're changing directions. Don't send out any more defeat. This is a new day. Send out health, send out healing, send out strength, vitality, victory. You've got to get your command center sending out the right instructions. The people that are going to be successful are willing to do the things today others won't do in order to have the things tomorrow others won't have. What is it that most people won't do? Here's what they won't do. Learn something new. They're comfortable with what they're doing now. Learn something new. You need to learn how to control your own destiny. Be your own boss. That's what time it is. Most of the time your challenge is you're not solving it quickly enough. You're not getting totally certain. Certainty is so huge. Flood yourself with certainty. And then most people don't understand you can obliterate most problems with just massive action. I see people hem and haw and make excuses all the time when challenges arise. And it would have just been solved if you'd have decided you'd have been totally certain and you'd obliterate that problem with some massive action. How great to have a mind to expand and a soul to nourish, to have hands that can feel, a heart that can experience, a soul that can soar, a mind that can inquire and learn, a body that can respond, to know love, sadness, hope, disappointment, accomplishment, failure, thrills, appreciation, wonder, frustration, confidence, courage, impatience, contentment, expectation, fulfillment, beauty, and harmony. To have all this happen to one is one thing. To know it is all happening is much more. What stress really is when a problem comes up is the fear of loss. And what you do is you begin to give this a disempowering meaning and you begin to feel like you're going to lose something. 
which is why having a process means so much to me because when I know I have a process to solve a problem, I'm so much less fearful of the loss or the stress that it's going to cause me. When you begin to get these feelings, it's where your focus is going that's causing this stress level to rise in you. And my hallucination for many of you is that when a problem arises, you begin to focus on the problem more than the solution. You begin to magnify your stress level, make a disempowering meaning, which is this fear you're going to lose something. If you're still wounded over a position you lost, you'll go to that new company, defensive, not friendly. You're treating them based on what you've been through, but they had nothing to do with it. It's much more freeing when you learn to let things go. God will be your vindicator. He'll take care of who did you wrong. It's not your job to pay people back. They hurt you once. Don't let them continue to hurt you by holding on to it. It's easy to say, I have a dream. That's easy. You can say that when the enthusiasm is there. You can say that when you have enough money in the bank. But I'm telling you, it's hard to say, I still have a dream. I still have a dream. Can't you say that after your friends turn on you, and after the people that you're doing it for stop believing in you? Discouragement is deadly. It can get you off track. When you have a setback and you get discouraged, you can get set on the shelf. We all get discouraged. It's powerful. Uh, it is universal. It involves everybody. And it is recurring. It doesn't just happen one time in your life. Many of us never ever discover our greatness because we become sidetracked by secondary activity. We start doing so many things, we just give our time away until we don't have any time for ourselves or any time to do the things that we want to do. I'm saying to you that one day you look around and there goes a year, there goes two years, there goes three years. So if there's something you want to do, do it now. A man's life consists in how he managed time and change. We become what we are as a result of how we use time and how we manage the changes in our lives. Our mind comes as standard equipment at birth and things that are given to us for nothing we place little value on. Things that we pay money for, we value. The paradox is that exactly the reverse is true. Everything that's really worthwhile in life came to us free. Our mind, our body, our hopes, our dreams, our ambitions, our intelligence. All these priceless possessions are free. But the things that cost us money are actually very cheap and can be replaced at any time. Use your power to create a new beginning for yourself. Find something that you love. I didn't come here to work for someone else. I came here to live my calling. A job is what you get paid for. A calling is what you're made for. I invested in myself. I couldn't afford to do it, but I couldn't afford not to do it. All disciplines carry through to affect all parts of our lives. If we're disciplined in just one area and lazy in another, guess what? The bad habits in one area of our life will eventually destroy our self-discipline in the areas we've been working on. Discipline is a set of standards which we've selected as a personal code of conduct. Discipline is the mind being trained to control our lives. Discipline is imposing on ourselves the requirements for honoring these standards. The most fatal deterrent to self-confidence is guilt. Not doing all you know how to do to the full extent of your present ability weakens the foundation for confidence. The biggest part of worry comes from the lack of this personal confidence. And lack of confidence comes from two major things. First, no goals or plans. And second, no daily discipline to achieve. So listen to the voices of creative experience. Let nature, experience, wisdom speak to you and teach you. Remember, both opportunity and challenge await action.
you can work on micro habits with regards to your conscientiousness and I think the best micro habits set up some aims for yourself goals that you actually value it helps you do a situational analysis of your life more than a psychological analysis I would say and so, so the questions are something like well you're gonna have to put some effort into your life we become what we think about conversely the man who has no goal who doesn't know where he's going and whose thoughts must therefore be thoughts of confusion and anxiety and fear and worry becomes what he thinks about and if he thinks about nothing he becomes nothing motivation is it's kind of a strange word we think it means that we're fired up to do something and passionate to make something happen because you just can't turn on passion you can't just turn on the desire to execute a task be certain of one thing Every exaggeration of the truth, once detected by others, destroys our credibility and makes all that we say and do suspect. The tendency to exaggerate, distort, or even withhold the truth is an inherent part of all of us. It starts when we're kids, and then it continues when we're adults, exaggerating our net worth to impress old friends exaggerating how close we are to closing a deal to impress the boss. If you make it to the end of this video, I want you to write, I am determined to reach my goals. I am determined to reach my goals. God may be giving you more to work with than what you are working with at this time. That's why I don't like to hang with low-thinking people, because they'll make you underutilize what God has given you. You need somebody to challenge you that you could be doing more than what you're doing right now. You could have more than you have right now. You could go further than you're going right now. And somebody's got to be bold enough to look you in the face and empower you to go into the enemy's camp and take back what he stole from you. Now listen to me, I don't care if you're sick, I don't care what you're going through. If you're not dead, he ain't through with you yet. As long as you're waking up, you're still in the game. You can still make it happen. As long as that breath in your nostrils boo, you're still in the game. You still can win. Now get your butt up. I want to encourage somebody out there who's thinking about quitting and giving up. Somebody who has been praying for years for things to turn around. You're thinking about quitting, you're thinking about giving up, you are caving in. This is for you. Pick up your damn suffering and bear it and try to be a good person so you don't make it worse. That's what life is like. It's suffering. I'm in a fight for my life. I'm in a fight to be a man. I'm in a fight to be a father. I'm in a fight to be a mama. Something in me wants to quit it and walk away. I'm in a fight. Give me somebody in here. Have you ever just had one of those days when your parachute doesn't open. The race has started, but your gate won't unlock. You can't keep it in the fairway. You just can't keep up. You can't keep your head above water. It's just one of those days. Strive to become the kind of person that people of quality and substance would want to be associated with. Become a person of skillful language, well-read and well-disciplined, positive attitude, a person of culture and intelligence. You will be uniquely rewarded by this reputation, drawing exciting people to you. Remember to attract valuable people. You must be attractive. Association is truly one of the seven fundamentals to your future wealth and happiness. It has such a major effect on how your life works out. You gotta go through some things in order for you to get faith. You've got to have some life experiences under your belt so you can talk about how strong your faith is. Because if your faith has never been tested, you can't brag on how strong it is. And if you're not careful, you will allow situations in this life to cloud your perspective. And you will allow moments in this life to take away the hopes and the dreams of tomorrow. Failure, it's not final, it's formative, it's part of the journey. How are you gonna learn if you don't ever fail?
Failure is fuel for your future. Failure is a part of your story. The only time you fail is the last time you try. You need to get the right perspective on it because this failure, it will not end in death, but this failure is a part of you being formed. Quit school, quit jobs, quit life, quit friends. Oh, what an urge it is to quit. Sometimes when you enter into a storm, health storms, financial storms, there are all kinds of storms. I'm talking about storms that other people can't see. Storms that make people think you haven't been through anything. Because you get up out of the bed every morning and you put your hair up and, and they don't know you put your smile on just like you did your makeup and, and walked in smiling because you were going through a secret storm. Has anybody ever gone through a secret storm? What you want is a powerful motivator, but the reason why you want it is an even more powerful motivator. It has greater pull. You may find that some of your goals you thought at first glance were important are not important after all. Do some reflecting, refining, and revising. The joy is not in the success. The joy is in trying. The joy is in the process that I'm going to keep working. I'm going to keep going at it. See, failure is forming my future. Failure is just another peg in the ladder for me to go higher. I don't want to just know how to make it work. I want to know why it doesn't work. And the only way I can find that out is I got to fall on my face. But guess what? The righteous man falls seven times, but he gets back up. And you can run faster with a hundred who want to go than with one around your neck. These people are bad for your health. Toxic relationships are relationships with people that always criticize you. All they can do is find fault. All they can do is just exploit your weaknesses. All they can do is remind you of the mistakes that you've made in the past. See, there are some people that aren't good for you. So you got to look at the people in your life and find out what kind of person are you becoming because of that relationship. Birds of a feather flock together. You run around with losers, you will end up a loser. You're doing the best you can, but you put one foot forward and two steps are made back. You're trying, but things don't seem to be quite working out the way you play. You thought you'd be in a different place at this season in your life. You're doing everything right, but you're still suffering. The way you enjoy life best is to wrap up one goal and start right on the next one. Don't linger too long at the table of success. The only way to enjoy another meal is to get hungry. Another thing to check for on your list is that you have included goals for each of these three important categories. First, make certain your list includes material items you want, such as a home, furniture, a car, or jewelry. Don't attach the wrong importance to things, but they are important. Make sure you've listed your economic goals, your goals for income, profits, and productivity. Third, you'll want to include on your list goals for personal development. Your goals to be more physically fit, to lose weight, to be a more effective leader, to be more decisive, to be a better communicator, to learn another language. Of course, there are other types of goals to consider, social goals, family goals, lifestyle goals. This is pretty heavy homework, but remember, whether or not you do your homework shows up in the marketplace as well as in the classroom. There's nothing in this world that can defeat us if God is for us. And if God be for us, who can be against us? It is impossible to have victory and think bondage. It's impossible to be happy and think sadness and depression. When I'm discouraged, I need somebody to come alongside me to encourage me that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. That kind of talk wakes up my faith. It stirs my faith to know that no matter how dark my situation, God can work it out. Most of y'all are able to say you don't like your friends. You don't trust them. They tell all of your deep, dark secrets. So why are they still there?
Because you go to sleep at night doesn't mean that you're resting. See, I realized if your life and the people that you have in your life creates nightmares for your life, what makes you think that because you're going to sleep that your mind is going to stop? The nightmares that you're having while you're awake, you're witnessing nightmares. Drama, dysfunction, negative people, you consuming your life. It's like, oh, there's negative dysfunction and drama. You're going to walk into the direction of dysfunction and nightmares. I'm encouraging you to be mindful and be deliberate of what you let in your mind. Be concerned about what's going on and do the things necessary that keeps you out of harm's way. But don't be consumed with it. So make up your mind to watch something that inspire you, that lift you up as you rethink your life in self-examination. It's essential to set aside some time every week to review all of your goals, redo them, restructure them, to add goals, or to tear up the whole list and start over. Goal setting is not something you do just once. It's a continual process. Also, you must constantly check your progress toward your goals. You don't want to fall too far behind on, or worse, lose sight of, your important goals. Now, just as important as your long-range goals are your short-range goals. Your goals for tomorrow, next week, next month, these are goals you can accomplish within the next year, the immediate future. We call these goals confidence builders. When you work hard, burn the midnight oil, and accomplish these little things, it builds your confidence to go for your long-range goals. Write down in your notebook or journal all the little things you would like to have or accomplish in the next year. How you set up this list is up to you. You might want to break it down by week or by month. Set it up in whatever way works well for you. Part of the fun of having a list is being able to check off something as obtained or completed. Every week, try to check off at least one thing on your list of short-term goals. And when you are able to check off something major, something on your list of long-range goals, celebrate, congratulate yourself, make winning joyful. It is very important to celebrate progress. We grow from two experiences. One is the joy of winning, and the other is the pain of losing. Here's what that also means. Make losing painful. Put it on yourself. If you set something up, fooled around, didn't pull it off, put it on yourself. And get around people who will help in this area. Hey, don't join an easy crowd. Go where the expectations are high, where the pressure to perform is high. It's how we grow. Somebody needs to know today you're going to make it. Somebody needs to know today you're doing all right. You may not be what you ought to be, but you're not what you used to be. And you're going to get there by God's grace. Don't you give up. Don't you quit. And don't you keep putting yourself down. You're doing better than you think you are. You lay in the bed wrestling with ghosts of what ifs and maybes and suppose and I think and I heard and I felt and you wake up tired in the morning because you, you might have slept but you didn't rest because all in your sleep you've been fighting. Most people are living their lives from a heart place and not a head place. They are so engrossed with what the heart feels that they have not covered what the head thinks. Most people are governed by their emotions. We all need associations with people of substance to provide influence concerning major issues, society, money, love, culture, friendship, taste, enterprise, family, opportunity, community. Behavior is mostly influenced by ideas. And ideas are mostly influenced by education. And education is mostly influenced by the people with whom we associate. So don't join an easy crowd. Make sure you get around people who can ask the right questions about the latest ideas you've discovered, about your philosophy, your enterprise, your goals, your lifestyle. Go where the demands are high, where the spotlight is on to grow, where the expectations are high to produce and to become more than you currently are. 
This is the time to look at the relationships in your life and ask the question, what kind of person am I becoming because of this relationship? Am I growing mentally and emotionally and spiritually? Am I becoming a better person because of this relationship? Is it an asset to me or a liability? Everybody has something that strikes terror in them to do it. Whatever you got hurt at, whatever you got damaged in, is the thing that you struggle to do. Those strong holes come against you every time you try to move outside of your little prison. And people think you are angry, but the anger is the fruit. The root is the fear. Most angry people are scared. Pull it by the roots, strong holes, casting down imaginations, envisioning self-destruction, the enemy terrorizing you with what he might do. That storm that you're in, it seems like that storm is enveloping the whole world hard to see out of that storm it's hard to see past it it seems like the storm is everything you can get out of the storm and you will get out of the storm but right now you're being tried you're being tested by fire and by pain don't fail the test measurable progress and having someone to monitor that progress I will never forget my first list of goals that I put together. My list contained only four or five items. When I showed it to him, he said, is this your list? I said, yes. Then he started asking those very wise questions. How about your health goals? I didn't have any of those on my list. He asked, how about your investment goals? Those were lacking. Your family goals. How about your travel goals? How about your goals for gifts and sharing? What would you like to become? Who would you like to meet? What skills would you like to develop? Did you ever want to write a book, a poem? Would you like to be a sophisticated person of power and influence and culture? Would you like to be debt free? How about education for your children? How about a splendid library stocked with the best of books? Would you like to see New York? visit Paris, explore Rome? Would you like to make some new friends? Did you ever want to parachute out of an airplane? Do you need a ranch someday, a cabin in the mountains? Is there something you'd like to prove, a mark you'd like to make? I've resolved in my spirit that every experience is my education. So the good experiences and the bad experiences, I'm going to learn from that and I'm going to discover the opportunity for me to grow and for me to get better. I'm telling you, I've already made up my mind that I know I will fall down. I know that I will stumble, but I already see myself getting back up. Therefore, I'm never down. I'm either up or getting back up. I'm going to learn. How much do you love yourself? You don't trust them, so why are they still there? So if you get rid of these things, people, and situations now, you get rid of the nightmares now, they're not going to have anything new to spread about you. You're in the new season of your life. I want you to win. I want you to get to the next level. You need to change your mind because some of you are thinking about giving up because you're in a season of failure. But just because you failed doesn't mean that God doesn't have a bright future in store for you. It is always too soon to quit. Remember, major keys to your better future are going to be ideas and information. If we have any lack, it is not because we lack money or opportunity or resources. It is because we lack ideas that have taken form from information. If you search, you will find. So that is the way to discover ideas and life-changing information. Search. In order to find, you must search. You must go and engage in conversations with people of substance. You must go looking, go searching. Rarely does a good idea interrupt you. And as you make a diligent search, you will find just the ideas you need.
You want to know how to change your life and give it to you in three words, boring as it sounds, raise your standards. Everybody in life gets their musts. They don't get their shoulds. Most people have a list of shoulds, don't they? Don't you have a list of things you should do, you should follow through on? I, I should lose some weight, I should work out more, I should get into the office earlier. People love to have their should list be met, but it's kind of like New Year's resolutions to kind of know it's not gonna happen. But when you decide something is a must for you, and you cut off any possible, you say, I'm gonna find the way, or I'm gonna make the way. Human beings, when they resolve things, when they have to make a real resolution inside themselves, which is they raise the standard, they make it a must, they find a way to make things work. Because somewhere when we make this click, when we make something a must, we attach ourselves to it. It becomes part of our identity. Whatever people have their identity attached to, they live. We live who we believe we are. Your physical body today is an absolute reflection of only one thing, not your goals, not your desires, but your standards. If you identify yourself in a new way and you own that every day, and that becomes the standard of how you live, you'll find a way to make that standard real. It all comes down to the inner game, my friends. Changing your life is a change in the inner game. The outside world you can't control, but you have absolute control over this one if you learn the dynamics of what shapes you. Instead of your goals to lose 10 pounds, which is not compelling, what if your vision was to get back to my fighting weight? You know, this year, this month, this next 90 days, I'm gonna transform my body. I'm gonna take on a new challenge. I'm gonna find some technique or strategy. There's a million of them that can reframe myself. Where I'm gonna feel younger, stronger, more vibrant than ever before. Here's my reasons, because I want the energy to really make my life work. Because it's tough out there and I wanna be stronger than I've ever been before. Don't let this year be like last. And if last year was great, still don't let it be that way. Raise the standard. If your life is perfect and extraordinary, you darn well know you're not going to be happy unless you keep making it better. It's not what we get that makes us happy. It's who we become. The only thing that's going to make you happy, my friend, in this year or any other, is to step up. It's to raise the standard. It's to discover what you're capable of and feel that incredible power of pushing through whatever's holding you back and get to the other side of more of your true self. Credit goes to our awesome patrons who make videos like this one possible. Consider joining them to support our work. You can also support us by subscribing to our channel and clicking the bell button to get notified when our new videos are released. And as always, thank you for watching.